Hey guys, it's Robbie here. So as I said in my last video, I'm an emotional eater. Whether I'm sad, whether I'm happy, whether I'm angry, whether I'm depressed, any emotion basically, I want to jump to food and eat. And it's become a big problem and I've dealt with it before. And so I'm trying to get back on track and deal with it again. I also noticed somebody in my Facebook group had posted asking for help as far as emotional eating goes. So I promised her that I would research and find some tips and things that could possibly help us. And I think I've come up with some good stuff. So that's what I'm gonna talk about today. All right, so diets and planning and all of those things, they're great for losing weight, but they all have to do with self-control. We all logically know how to lose weight. Calories in versus calories out. Move your body, burn energy. But that doesn't take into account emotions. And as I just said, I rarely eat because I'm actually hungry. I eat because of emotions. And so that is something that needs to be addressed rather than knowing how many calories, how much protein, how many points, how many carbs, all of that stuff. That's just groundwork, but that doesn't fully envelop the picture of what needs to be done. These habits need to be changed and it's very hard. It's very hard. Our go-to, my go-to for dealing with anything is distraction. I talk about that a lot with my therapist. Anytime I have issues, anytime I have major you know, depression, major complications, major anything, I distract myself and often it is with food. So I compiled this list of things that I found online through like dozens of websites because some of the websites like literally were stupid. Like, so I'm glad that I hopefully did the work for some of you guys because looking through some of them, the tips they're giving are literally not actually having anything to do with emotional emotional eating or lack of self-control. It, it was ridiculous, some of the things I came across. So this list, um, I am going to do it in two parts. The first part are things that I'm putting like a little asterisk next to that these are things to do, but give yourself permission to eat after you do them. It sounds weird, like the whole point is to not eat. But my theory is by giving yourself permission to eat, it will make it so that you don't have that guilt attached. And sometimes that forbidden fruit factor and that I'm doing something I shouldn't be doing is what's making it more attractive and making you wanna do it. Self-sabotage is a huge factor. So if you take that away for like, I'm gonna allow myself to do that after I try one of these things and that factor is gone. Plus, with that factor being reduced, if you um, do these things, possibly you won't want to binge anymore or you might want to still eat but you might be in a calmer place where you could make a healthier decision where like, yeah, I shouldn't be eating anymore now but Maybe I'm going to grab some fruit or some vegetables or, you know, something healthier rather than I'm going to order a pizza. That's what I tend to do. So again, theories, and I am going to talk more about it with my therapist tonight and see if she has any tips or see if she knows anything extra that can help. But this is just the research that I've done since Sunday. So it's only been a few days of researching, but um, I still think, you know, it can help. All right. So anyway, so the first thing is journaling. I know we've all heard of journaling. I do not, I am not capable of sticking to a journal structure. So that's why, like I mentioned before, I started doing a more bullet journal. That way I, I create my own index in the beginning of the journal. And so some days I am going to actually journal and write out stuff. Some days I'm going to doodle. Some days I actually want to make to-do lists. Some days I want to, I don't know, do other stuff. 
but I don't stick to it regularly. But if I am having a moment where I'm like, I'm about ready to order a pizza, I'm about ready to door dash a bunch of food, I'm about ready to just eat whatever is in my house, all of it. If I say, you know, again, with the disclaimer, I'm allowed to, but let me write about this first. So write down my feelings and my thoughts, what's going on in my head before going to that, I think can really help because one, often I am I get so caught up in the emotions because, and that has to do with my ADHD and a lot of people with whether they have anxiety, depression, bipolar, whatever, this can happen where the thoughts are flying back and forth in their heads where I'm not remembering the thoughts but the emotions are there and then I get so overwhelmed and so depressed or so anxious that I just binge. So slow down and write it out. What am I actually thinking? Because when you're actually having to put the thoughts to a pen or you know if you're typing, whatever you want to do, it slows it down so that you can actually see it in black and white. So your brain is a little bit more calmer after you've done that and not to mention hopefully you've written down some things that you're like, I didn't even realize this is bothering me. I didn't even realize I need to address this. And I, I just in journaling in general, I know I've come across that. Not when I've been doing it trying to prevent a binge, but when I was just doing it in general, I was like, I didn't even realize I thought that way until you see it in black and white or, you know, red and white, green and white, whatever you're writing with. Um, and so that can help you get to more the root of the problem, which is what, you know, we need to deal with. Often, like, that's what honestly was a huge reason why I ended up getting a huge bout of depression was because all of a sudden, when I was losing weight, I I had totally stopped, um, stopped using food as an escape, as a distraction. And instead, I was just left with these things and I didn't know what to do with it and I got really depressed. That's, you know, luckily I, I started seeing psychiatrists and therapists and I'm on the, I'm on the track to getting healthier, healthier mentally, but you don't realize necessarily what all is up there because we're so used to using food as a distraction. All right, so the next one is simply set a timer. Like set a timer five minutes, 30 minutes, whatever you think could possibly help the idea is to just, I can have this, but I'm going to wait. And it, in that waiting period, you might be able to calm down and might be able to actually think about, well, maybe I really don't want to have all that and make a better decision. The next one, do laps around your house or your apartment. Like it sounds silly, but a lot of times there's this anxious energy and we don't realize it, especially like, I mean, a lot of bigger people like myself, we feel like we're pretty lazy. We don't move a lot, but we still have energy that we have to burn, whether we realize it or not. And especially when anxiety goes higher and stress is higher and depression is higher, often there's more energy being built up that needs to be released. And so sometimes that means we're grabbing food and just because it'll help burn energy, that activity. But sometimes just doing some laps around your house is going to help actually spend some of that extra energy, calm us down a little bit. Uh, obviously you could do this with more strenuous activity, actual exercise, but like, let's just be honest, sometimes, you know, that sounds more daunting. I don't want to get all hot and sweaty, but I can walk around my apartment and that can, you know, ultimately help calm down. Um, plus you get more steps in. All right, so the next one is work on a hobby for 30 minutes. like. I just made up a time 30 minutes, but I feel like most hobbies would at least take that. And especially a hobby if it's using your mental capacity, using your brain and using your hands. So if you're crafting of some sorts, doing Sudoku, how do you say that, Sudoku? Um, anything that is using your hands and your brain, it'll, it'll help, again, focus your thoughts into what you're doing and that'll be a distraction and it's a healthy distraction rather than a food distraction. Um, the next one is call, video chat, text, or otherwise communicate with a friend or a family member. And I, this is gonna be mentioned again, but this one, not food related. For me, 
just simply getting some social interaction by communicating with other people it's a distraction and you're getting something that you might need i know often i struggle a lot with being lonely and so by reaching out i'm horrible at reaching out to people but by reaching out to people you're going to help fight some of that loneliness because you interacted with somebody and like i said it's also distracting you from what you're going to do for me in this particular category i would not say i want to talk to them about hey i'm calling you because i don't want to eat i'm feeling like a binge because then we're going to talk about that and if it's not the right environment not the right person it could end up making me want it more because if i talk about these issues with the wrong people it amps it up sometimes so this is purely for socializing just to distract myself just to have that bond with somebody else because that could help solve an issue that could be an underlying issue for you know the binging um the next one is look at your whys i've talked before and you know i have my board it's sitting over here like i haven't hung it up yet Ugh, two months in i haven't hung it up but it's still right here where i can look at it any time and i have it in my bullet journal my list of whys all of my reasons for why i want to lose weight what is my cause what is the driving factor because otherwise without a why why am i doing this then so looking at that just taking a moment even read each one preferably read it out loud if you're alone um but read it or you know if a family members around that doesn't mind but either way read it out loud or read it in your head and that alone can help you be like all right i want to binge but I also don't want my back to be, keep hurting like it has been. Like right now, I'm literally dealing with back spasms. Again, fun. Um, so that alone can help make a better decision because those whys are there for a reason. They're the whole reason we're starting all this. And the next one's going to sound weird. And this one might only apply to me. And this one I came up with myself. I didn't look up online. But for me, looking in a mirror, I don't love how I look. Like, honestly, from this this area up, I'm fine. I like this. I did like my face when it was a little bit skinnier, but I don't hate it. But if I stand up and, like, everything else, I hate it. I really, really do. And I, I know we should love our bodies and all that jazz. I don't. And so looking in the mirror, like, couldn't at least help. I mean, this can backfire <laughs> because you can be like, well, forget it. I've already done this, whatever. But hopefully the idea is to look at it. Look at yourself, look at your body and be like, I don't like this. I want to change this. And ordering that pizza, eating that pint of ice cream is not going to help me change this. So let me make a better decision. And just doing all that, I think, can help. So that's the first section of things. All of those things, I think, should be done with the prelude that you're giving yourself permission to eat afterwards. Now, for the second half of the list, these are more long-term things. These aren't, I don't feel, uh, things to do in the moment of it happening. These are a little more working towards to prevent that in the future. Um, so the first one is developing healthier habits with your other meals. I know I'm very guilty of when I get home from work, I grab some food, I throw on the TV, and I'm eating while watching TV. And that can often make me not process the fact that I just ate because I'm actually thinking about the show that I'm watching or, you know, like typically I'm also on my phone, whether I'm messaging or playing a game on my phone while watching TV, while eating. And my, my brain hasn't processed that I even ate because it's just one of the activities I was doing with everything else. And this is harder for me to do with ADHD, but to actually sit down and focus on the food, leave the, leave everything else off and just focus on the food, ideally can help us mentally process that we did eat. Like it's, it's in our memory, it's there. We just did that because there's nothing else distracting us from the fact that we did eat. And that can help us um, feel more satisfied with the food because like i know like literally last night i i cooked uh some food 
And I and I had some other thing that I cooked, and I was like, you know, this isn't even that good. I'm not going to eat this. And I went and ate my other food and was watching TV, and all of it was within my calories. But still, like, I was should have been satisfied with the one thing, but then because I was watching TV and all this other stuff while eating, I was like, I didn't like that other stuff, but I tracked the calories and it's in there. So I'm just going to go eat it. And so if I actually focused on my, what I was eating, I feel like it might not, might have prevented that. Um, also, just a side note, eat more protein with other meals because protein does help you feel a little bit fuller and typically it takes longer to eat. So just simply having to chew more makes us feel like we're eating more versus like if we're, you know, I can't think of an example of what, but if we're eating something that we can just eat really quick, that doesn't process as well as protein and, and actually doing more chewing. That's why I don't like smoothies for meals because if I drink it, I don't feel like I ate anything. It could be a thousand calorie smoothie. I'm not going to feel like I'm full or satisfied afterwards. I need everything else. Okay, so the next one is honestly therapy. Like it sounds silly because like I just need to lose weight. I don't need therapy. But often, especially if we are emotional eaters and especially if we struggle with binging, there's reasons behind that. It's not just because I'm addicted to food. That is part of it. But we became addicted to food because of these other underlying issues. Like I said that earlier how once I, the last time I was losing weight, you know, a year ago, um, I had stopped using food as a distraction and all of a sudden all these other things start bubbling up because I'm not distracting myself with food anymore. And so we need therapy to help kind of counterbalance that and deal with those emotions and hopefully find a healthier way to deal with these emotions. Um, because chances are it, it could be some trauma. It could be some other major underlying factors of things that happened to you that you never learned how to deal with. Um, so that's a big thing. And also I do want to throw out there, especially uh, cognitive behavioral therapy, that therapy, that type of therapy, look for that type of therapist. It can really help understand why I'm doing, why I have the reaction that I have to things. And understanding that can help you change that reaction to something else. So this is happening. I'm feeling this way because of that. So I'm going to do this. Instead, it, you can change it to this is happening. I'm feeling this way, but I'm going to do that instead of this. If that makes sense. Um, so therapy. The next one is a, a support network. This one ties into like what I was saying earlier about calling or communicating with somebody, but this should be a, a network of people, a person or people that know what's going on, that know you are having these, these health goals and having the, these struggles and for you to reach out to them either in a moment of, you know, more crisis or just in general to check in. I am using YouTube for that. I use my therapist for that. And I have several friends that are trying to lose weight as well. And so we check in and touch base with each other all the time. Um, not as much as I should have been, obviously, but it's work in progress. But um, so, and these people should not be judgmental. They shouldn't be people that like, you know, like, oh man, I'm really wanting to binge or I, or I did last night. And they'll be like, why'd you do that? And you're forgetting your goals. They shouldn't be mean. They should be encouraging. They should be like, okay, now you did that. Let's move on. Is there anything you can learn from that? Anything that I can do to help prevent that from happening in the future should be encouraging people. And sometimes that's hard. I know a lot of people don't have people in their lives like that. I mean, the people that I have like that are like online. So use that if you need to. Like my Facebook group, other weight loss Facebook groups, they're all there for support and nothing is weird. Like sometimes you feel embarrassed. Like I don't want to put this out there, but Believe me, we all understand. We've all been there. So reaching out, whether it's in a group, whether it's an actual friend, whether it's a family member, whether it's a therapist, having some kind of support network is very important. And this last one honestly can go in either category, but drink hot tea. Um, this one I'm bad at because I'm not a huge tea drinker, but I was looking and doing a lot of research and I cannot remember the word. 
it's L theoline or something like that. But certain teas like green tea, matcha tea, things like that, not the highly caffeinated teas, but the other ones do have ingredients that actually help with fight stress, help calm us down. And often a lot of times because I get so amped up in the emotions, that's what makes me want to binge. So drinking tea a little bit more regularly can help. And then also in the moment it can help because the ritual of making tea, of getting the water hot, putting the tea bag in, steeping it, all of that takes time and takes a little bit of focus. And then when you actually drink it, you get the benefits from the tea itself. And so all of that wrapped up together can help ease stress, which can help prevent a binge or make a binge a little bit less. Like, honestly, that's my main goal right now is if slash when it's going to happen to make it less extreme than what it has been and try to work on it from there. So, um, hold on. I had one other thing I wanted to say before I called this. What was it? Okay. Yeah. So basically like kind of what I was just saying, it's, it's not going to happen overnight that we're going to prevent this, that we're going to change these habits. We didn't learn to emotionally eat overnight. So it's not going to go away over overnight. Retraining your brain, changing your habits is huge and can take a long, long time. So all we can do is work on it. So when it happens again, I know for me, it's a matter of when, it's not a matter of if, when it happens again, we've got to just accept it, learn what I can from it and move on. I do think it's important that middle section, learn what I can, because often, you know, there's something that I can think about, I could have done this and it might've helped. And so learn what you can, why you binged, what led to it, and move on from there and try to prevent it from happening again. It's gonna be a process and it's gonna take time, but it took, it was a process and it took time to get to where we are now. Um, yeah. So hopefully that helps you guys. I feel like this is going to help me. These are tools that I'm going to utilize myself and hopefully will help in the long run and you know create a healthier me. So thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I will talk to you all later.